Tuesday and really into today up until the FOMC meeting have provided wonderful long opportunities for us. We did get that 25 basis point as expected that I talked about in my last video from Jerome Powell. We got 4.75% to 5% as our Fed funds rate. Terminal rate is at 5.1%. Everything was looking wonderful. And then the SEP said that we might not see rate hikes this year. And then Jerome Powell came out in the press conference and said, hey, due to what's going on with the regional banks, lending is going to be more strict for consumers. So it's going to do additional work for us. That would normally be seen as a bullish thing. But I think with what's going on with this uncertainty with the banking situation is definitely going to cause like a little unease in the market and maybe the market didn't like the fact that the fed is going to hold rates for higher for longer not cutting rates this year and we might see rate cuts next year down to i think it was 4.3 percent but the market pulled a massive uno reverse card on us and i want to put out a video because i'm going to be watching these five stocks that we're going to go over here soon versus what was on my watch list in my last video and i'll put out a video this weekend if I'm going to be continuing to watch these, I'll keep you guys updated. But they definitely have some interesting setups. And I definitely want to talk about them. But before we dive in and talk about the details, do me a favor, drop a like down this video, hit that subscribe button, make sure you ring that bell for the YouTube algorithm. It really does help me out a lot. But let's dive on in. So the first stock that we're going to be taking a look at here is Roku. And with each one of these stocks, I'm going to be drawing a trend line because really trend lines here help us dictate what's going to be going on when we take a look at roku here on the daily we had a nice bullish movement up on tuesday we had a two hammer here definitely looking nice trend moving up and then we have this massive fail two down i personally love playing these failed setups because it definitely shows the direction of the candle this almost became an outside bar on the daily which is when you break the previous high and previous low of that candle you can come down here and also take a look at the volume as well and see that a lot of it is red. There's a very small nib of it that is green. And we have an orange dot here on the squeeze indicator. It's MAC, the, or not the MACD. Not, the MACD is turning, yes, a little bit bullish, but it could push back down and also be bearish as well. So we could squeeze down here. Now, what would, be, what would we be looking at for the downside here? Let's take a look here. 59.80 would be definitely a price target as well. You could take a look here at 56.96. And then really the point that I would be looking at the most is 54.50. And why am I saying that? Because we had this bounce here off of this trend line. We come up, we pop. And where do we bounce? We bounce right here. We come down, we test here. So we've been at this level twice, so it's definitely got a bit of structure to it. So if we break this level, it could cause a massive acceleration down. The market wants to sell really hard. So looking at Roku for the rest of the week, targets are going to be 59.80, 56.96, and then 54.50 would definitely be my final target before rolling over and seeing what it's going to provide down for us. Now, the next stock that I'm going to be taking a look at is going to be Microsoft. Microsoft is definitely very interesting because when you take a look at this setup, most people say, hey, this is a shooter candle, this is a hammer candle, pretty neutral. I'm going to say this time is different because you have a two down, you have a two down, you have a two up here. This shooter almost became a three, so I would almost expect tomorrow that we're going to create this two down and create what's called a bearish RJ setup, which is a con consolidation setup and can massively move. The reason why I say this time is different is if we take a look at this trend line here of where we rejected, really, when we attach, uh, is it this candle? I can't remember exactly. Oh, my bad. Right there. There we go. So we attach our trend line points here. We, we can see we came up to it the point here in the past, if we zoom in on this, and we re came up, almost tapped it, tapped it, rejected, came up, almost tapped it. Like we've definitely rejected this trend line, so we've still maintained that downtrend, which is very important. Come up here, wicket, reject. 
and then we almost touch it today and then we reject it. When we come down here and take a look at the four hour, you can really start seeing the shape of the structure of this. We created that outside bar candle to finish out the day. And you can see down here that volume is a lot of selling pressure. When you look at the daily, a lot of selling pressure. So targets that I'm gonna be looking at to the downside really, we're going to trigger two down on the day at 272.18. That's pretty much almost a guarantee that we're already be triggered at that point, depending on how futures are. Our first PT here is going to be at 269.52, followed by really, I would take a look at the bottom of this order block. It's going to be at 266.18, followed by the wick down here at this candle, which is going to be around 263.28, would be my PTs to the downside with this selling pressure. Now, if we do for some reason turn back up to the upside, I mean, you could look at 275, but based off of this candle, I have a hard feeling we're gonna be coming down with this. Now let's take a look at the next stock, which is going to be Caterpillar from XLI. You take a look at the one hour trend line here, it's gonna be another rejection that we're gonna be looking at. So with this trend line, you can see we come up, almost tap it, reject, we tapped it, and then we really rejected, and then we came up, touched it with this two up. We almost look like we, to a degree, might've broke above it with this, yeah, we did with this outside candle, created that outside candle, immediate re rejection down. Now, the interesting thing about Caterpillar is we have this structure here with these this 3-1 combo, it kind of is creating a little bit of structure at 219.11 would be a point to take a look at. And then really taking this candle down here, the two, what is that? 216.48, followed by the gap fill, which would definitely be something to take a look at. With gap fills, I normally look for 50%, but this is a pretty tiny gap, so 215.01. And really, if we, continue the sell even harder at that point. You got 212.71. It sounds crazy, but it has a $7 ATR on the daily. So we could come down here. This is definitely a strong level we've bounced from multiple times. So if we do test this level, I would almost look for us to break through it and test the bottom of this wick all the way at 211.21, which would definitely be a very strong move over the next coming days here into the end of the week. Now let's take it. The next stock is going to be Disney. Oh, Disney, I love you, but this just isn't going well for it so far. Now, not on the daily, my bad. It's on the one hour time frame that we got to take a look at this, where we essentially rejected off of was this candle, this outside candle here. Oh, come on, trend line. You're supposed to be up here. Thank you. So we come up, bump it with this nice outside bar. Let me zoom this in so you guys can see a little bit better. Bump it, you reject. We tapped it here, came down, created this outside bar, and then we rejected. Now with Disney, we do have a gap down below and we've already started to fill that gap. So like I said, always 50% of that gap. The next target after that gap is gonna be 94.21, followed by really kind of breaking this little bit of structure here, 93.55, followed by kind of tapping the outside of this order block here at 92.93, because this was a level that we did bounce at for a good amount of time and spent hovering right above this order block. So if we do break through this order block, it's going to turn into a breaker bar, which is gonna cause us to move more to the downside. Now, the other thing I, I do wanna point out is we have this order block back here as well. So really our sell side liquidity is going to be all the way down here at 9046, which would be a heck of a move. Disney only moves $2.50 a day. We do have the hour, the four hour in the day, plus the month in red. So we do have the momentum. You can see the selling pressure. The common thing with all these is the selling pressure and the trend line rejections are just lining up that it looks like we might start selling for the rest of the week. Now, the last stock that I'm going to leave you guys with is Tesla. Oh, Tesla, my Tesla. So Tesla, we got a trend line rejection here from today. 
if we take a look at it, we connect our trend line together. You can see this really even goes back further. You can just really see the power of trend lines. Shout out Zeus. Thank you so much for the introduction. That I, it's going to become an integral part of my trading no matter what. But we literally have rejected this. We've rejected this order block. We've rejected this order block. We touched the trend line. We reject. We touched it. And then we reject it. And now we're continuing down. Tesla does have several gaps to the downside. And you can see the strength of this candle and the selling volume that is occurring is just extremely strong. So that's why I'm focusing on the downside with this. So really the next candle that we're going to look at is going to be here at 188.04. We have the gap fill. So remember 50% of that gap fill we could take a fib here. Let me take my 50% of my fib from that candle, that candle. So you're going to be looking at 186.09 followed by meet this candle here at the bottom of this looks like order bearish order block and fair value gap at 184.04. We also want to draw our trend line up as well. If we come down to this point, it's going to be a trend line test. So it, multiple things are lining up with confluence of the low 180s for Tesla. Like if this is a break level, you zoom out. We have this nice gap here from earnings that we could go fill as well. So if things continue to sell and sell hard with volume, we have the hour, the four hour, and the day and the month all red. It could easily flip the week back red as well which would be flipped at oh boy that would be the trend line break easily at 176.35 oh says it opened at 178.08 so really flipping that back would be really detrimental and like this week you can see it's pretty much been a 50 50 split between buyers and sellers and all these stocks have had strong moves in the past. Tesla is a high beta stock. As you can see, it has 10 ET on the daily. So really, I'm going to be looking at the downside for all of these, and I'll keep you guys updated on the weekend of what I'm going to be looking at next week. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a huge favor, drop a like down below. Also, I turned up the audio in this video, so let me know how it sounds. If it sounds better or sounds worse, please let me know. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.